Morning, everybody. Morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, it's ammo time. <laughs> Guaylo from Manchester. Oh, I need a clicker. I can't, I can't do it yes. telepathically. Which one do I do? <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so start again. Good morning. My name is Mark. I am originally from UK in Manchester. I do not follow football. Just because I'm from Manchester doesn't mean everybody follows football. Uh, but I've not been there for 20 years because it's too cold. There are glaciers now in my hometown. It is so cold. I've been away for a long time, traveling a long time. I've lived in Asia for 16 years. My home is Kuala Lumpur. Uh, my wife is Malay. So she's a bumi putra, I'm a bumi pute. <laughs> it's like yin and yang. She's actually from Johor, and we have a lot of family here in uh, Singapore. A lot of cousins, aunties are based here. So when our children were small, we used to lots of, lots of times ballot kampong to Singapore. So I know Singapore very, very well. I used to live here uh, in 1995. I had a house, HDB, in Pasiris for one year. I spent a lot of time traveling down here for business, and I come down here now every week to do coaching with a few of the companies that some of you know me already. So today's talk was going to be on leadership, as you saw there, but the problem with me, when I start writing programs and talks, I get very dissatisfied or I get bored with my work very quickly, and I tend to change it a lot. So when I came down on, on Wednesday night, we had dinner with, with the team, with, with the uh, committee and stuff. They said that my slides were too long because I always do more than I need. People, was, people when they say to me, can you do a talk, uh, can you talk for one hour? I say, I can talk for one day. My challenge is not speaking, my challenge is stopping. <laughs> so the best thing is once you get bored, just turn the microphone off and go and have tea. So my slides were too long and it, we worked it out, I was probably going to be talking for about four hours. So the first night, had some beers, went back to my room, and I broke it down, and I changed the first slide. So this is the first set, which was leadership. And I thought, no, it's too long, and also too many people are speaking about leadership, and sort of same thing all the time. You don't want to hear the same message all the time. So I thought I'd change it. So I changed the first slides to now number two. I thought, I'll use your name. So Mentor Mophis Evolution Leadership. I thought, that's cool. We'll try that one. That was last Wednesday night. And then yesterday afternoon, yesterday morning, I'm listening to the guy speaking, and I thought, nah, don't like that. Again, it's a bit too complicated. So yesterday lunchtime, I went back to my room here, and I changed it again. This is the third set. And I thought, I'll talk about recruitment. <laughs> because you all need recruitment, and we all need to work on rec recruitment. But I thought, recruitment, the title, it's a bit too simple. It's, not, it's only one word. It's not complicated enough. So I thought, how do I change this again? So last night, after dinner, I broke away early. Some of the guys stayed behind a few drinks. I left, went early, went to my room, and I wrote it again, fourth time now. This is the fourth set of notes. And I thought, I'll try this. <laughs> how to make a shitload of money out of life assurance, which is what you want to do. But then I thought, I shouldn't use that word, because it's a bad word, and it's a bit too vulgar, and it's a bit too in your face. Uh, it's okay for Manchester people, we're in our face all the time, but you guys, Singaporeans, you're too nice. So last night, this, or this morning, I woke up at 3 a.m. with a number five title. So this is now the fifth reincarnation. And by the way, I'm not just changing the titles, I'm rewriting the whole notes here. At 3 o'clock this morning, I rewrote the program for a fifth time. So this is now the talk for today. How to make a shitload of money in life assurance as a leader, if you want to, and follow the system with Metamorphosis Evolution Leadership by Recruiting Talk. So that's today's title. We're going to look at that. Is that okay? That came this morning at 3 a.m. So I wrote most of that, then I went back to sleep, I woke up again at 5 o'clock, and I finished it off. So... Quick story about, about who I am, my background, very quickly, this is my CV. Just like you guys, I sell life assurance. This is now my 26th year as a life assurance agent. Let me show you what, who I am. I joined the business 23rd of March 1984 for a small company called Liberty Life Assurance back in the UK, Manchester. I did MDRT in my first nine months. 
I then went on to do COT and TOT, became an agency manager, or branch manager as we call it in the UK. I then started to become an offshore IFA, which is what I am now. I moved offshore because UK was too cold, as I mentioned before. So I am an IFA, Independent Financial Advisor. I lived in Malta, Dubai, South Africa, Southeast Asia, came here in 1993. I've got about 2,500 clients around the world, and my persistency is always 100%. I have never lost a client in 26 years, except to death. And if they want to die, got to get permission first, because <laughs> it messes up my system. But now, I'm still an offshore IFA, still selling. I'm going to Africa in March to do some uh, products over there. But currently now, I'm focusing on uh, coaching, and that's why I'm here today. So most of my time is coaching, because I'm too old. I know I look 25, but I'm not. Two weeks' time, I am 50 years old, Lima Pulu Town. So half a century, so it's time to start slowing down. And I can't afford to lose any more hair. <laughs> One of the things you'll learn about life assurance if you're new, life assurance loses hair. <laughs> when I joined life assurance, as some of you know my story, when I went on my BOP, my recruiting seminar, my, life, my hair was down to my ass, <laughs> literally. And over the years, it's gone slower, 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 and now... This is how it is. So that's me. So I want to talk about leaders as recruiting. Have you heard of this guy called Norman Levine? Yes. One of the greatest salespeople, life insurance people, speakers in the planet. And he talks about this, about agency recruiting and developing. He says this. One cannot just sit on the fence in any sales organization, no matter how effectively one is trained, no matter how quickly individuals grow. Because one day there will be attrition, people leaving. Disabilities or emergencies, and in some people will fail while others will defect. It is absolutely essential, therefore, that there is a net increase in all, sales of all levels of production and organizational development at the end of the year. Meaning, recruiting, even though you guys know you do and should do, you don't do enough, you don't do it consistently, and you don't do it effectively enough. And as leaders, Yes, you have to sell. Yes, you have to manage. Yes, you have to challenge and fix problems. But you have to keep on recruiting. When? All the time. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The only way you're going to grow effectively, comfortably, with less problems, is to grow by recruiting. I'll explain why as we go through the talk. But you've got to get recruiting right. So I want to spend the next hour talking to you about recruiting by sharing some stories. Is that okay? Am I speaking too slow, too fast? Is it okay? You want English, Hokkien, Mandarin, <laughs> French, German? If you want all them, it's tough shit, I can't do that. I just do English, but you might want it. Just giving the option. Okay, so, something called recruitment made, made easy. To me, and how I see this business after 25 years, this is an easy industry. Selling, to me, is easy. MDRT, easy. COT, easy. TOT, easy. When I became a manager, big stress, but still easy. Recruiting was easy. If you have a system, if you have steps to follow, and if you make it a consistent daily thing, it's difficult if you're doing it in stop, start, stop, start. Then it becomes a hassle. But by doing it consistently, it becomes easier and I want to show you, try, sh try to show you a system today which will help you with that. So, recruiting is easy. First of all, it's easy because we have a great story to tell. Life insurance is probably, not probably, I know, I know for a fact, life insurance is the greatest business in the world. You hear that a lot by speakers, and I'm sure you say it to your people, and your, man your manager said it to you. But it's true. There's no other industry in the world where you can join a business, become successful, and you don't have to think. This is the only industry where we don't get sued for plagiarism. In any other business outside there, if you copy a good idea, what's going to happen? They'll sue you. In our business, we're saying we've got a good idea. Copy it. I want you to copy my system. You can't say that in any other business outside life assurance. Next one, what other business or industry guarantees success? You can say to your recruits, hand on heart, 
with 100% honesty. If you follow my system, now this is assuming your system is correct, and that's a different story. But once your system is correct, you can say to people, if you follow my system exactly, I will guarantee your success in this business. How long it takes, 10 years, 15 years, depends how hard you work. But if you follow my system, I'll make you successful. My manager, Steve Frogger, a guy I learned to hate, because he was horrible, but he was also cool, he told me that. And I wouldn't believe him at first, but slowly it started to come through. The only reason I'm here today with you guys is because I was fortunate enough to have two very good leaders. Now, did I like these people? No, I hated my managers. 29 days a week, I wished my manager would have a car crash <laughs> and not come to the office. I wanted him to die in pain because he was a monster. In a past life, his name was Genghis Khan. <laughs> and he said to me, Steve said to me, Mark, I'm going I'm to make you hate my guts, but I promise you on payday, I'll be your best friend. And I said, bullshit, I just hate you anyway. So 29 days, I hated him. But on payday, when the check came, Steve, I love you. <laughs> then the first of the month, I hate you, you're a bastard. <laughs> but he was strong and he made me do it. That's the reason I'm here. So we guarantee success. And the next one, the big one, where else can you say to people, I will show you how to be a millionaire if you follow my system? There are many millionaires being made in life assurance in this country, in other parts of the world. I made my first million in sterling before I was 30 years old. Because I'm clever or because I'm handsome? Maybe. No, because I had a system and I followed it. And I believe my manager when they said, follow my system, I will make you rich. And it works. So we have a great story to tell, we have a great system to sell, and we can promise people that I'll make you rich. So how can recruiting be hard? You meet people in the street and say, excuse me, give me five minutes, I'll buy you a coffee, I'll show you how I can make you a millionaire in ten years. Is that worth five minutes? And I'll buy the coffee. If you don't believe my story, okay, la, good luck. But if you believe it, maybe you should join. Now you can say that's not bullshit, you can say that because it's true. Because you've got colleagues now in this country who are driving Ferraris and making a million dollars a year. So it's fact. So how can you tell me recruiting is hard? How many people in Singapore want to be millionaires? How many? A lot. So there's no excuse, is there? The only excuse is you don't want to go out there and find them. That's all. So recruiting is easy. Let's move on. So I want to show you a story of sowing and reaping. This is a story I learned a long time ago from my teacher and very good friend, Jim Rohn, who unfortunately passed away December the 19th last year. And he's sadly missed by a lot of people, including myself. So he showed me this story, I don't know, about 19, early 90s, a long time ago. And it's, it's not about insurance, it's about growth, but it relates to what we do. It's basically, basically, it's a metaphor on the story from the Bible. I'm not religious, I'm not a Christian as such. But I like old stories from religious books because they're cool stories. So this is from Jim Rohn. It's been a bit Mark-ized, uh, but it's a basic story. It's called Sowing and Reaping. So the story, it's called The Law of Sowing and Reaping, and it's the story of the sower. So the sower is the guy in the farm fields, and he's sowing seeds. That's the sower. He's sowing seeds. He could be sowing paddy fields or... Or, or corn seeds, or wheat, or any, it doesn't matter what seeds he's sowing, but this is a farmer, and he's sowing seeds, the story of the sower. So, the sower was ambitious, and he had excellent seed. Now, as far as you guys are concerned, you are the sowers, leaders, and the seed is what? The opportunity, life assurance. That's our seed. We sow seeds, and our seed is life assurance. And we as agent, as leaders, sorry, we are the sowers. So the sower was ambitious, and you guys are here, you paid money to be here, so obviously you must be ambitious. And you've got a great opportunity, life assurance, or you've got excellent seed, which is life assurance. A proven business, guaranteed to make it successful, easy to follow, don't need a PhD as long as you follow. Are we cool so far? Yes. Hello? Yes. Cool? cool? You've got to be cool. Say cool. cool. 
Thank you. So, the sower goes out to sow some seeds, but the first part of the seeds fall on the wayside and the birds get them. So the guy's out there in the morning, he's sowing his seeds, but some of the seeds fall on the side of the field and the birds get them. So lesson number one, write this down, lesson number one. The birds are going to get some of the seeds. The birds are going to get some of the seeds. Can I borrow some water? I'll give it back later. I'm not sure how, but I will. So lesson number one, the birds are going to get some of the seeds. So the birds are going to get some of the seeds. What does that mean? What does it mean to us? And what does it mean to the sower? You invite someone to come to a preview, a business opportunity, a BOP, whatever you call your recruiting seminars. You invite someone to come to a preview and they don't turn up. Does that happen to you guys? You invite people, they say they're going to come, you turn up, they get there, they don't come. And you say, I wonder why that guy didn't come. He was promised me he was going to come tonight at 7 o'clock. I called him one hour ago. He told me he was on the way. And he still didn't show. Now you know the answer. The birds are going to take some of the seeds. The guy didn't come because the birds got him. <laughs> Makes sense. That's why the guy promised he was there. He said, I'm on the way now. I'm just parking the car. I'll be up in five minutes. He still doesn't show. So now you know the answer. He didn't show because the birds got him. Your recruit had a great idea. So your new recruit had a great idea to come to your preview because he thought, I want to try some selling in life assurance. And somebody stole it. On his way to see you on a Monday night, he called his friend. His friend called him and said, how about meeting with Tay Tarek tonight? He said, yeah, but later I'm going to meet these insurance guys first. So can I meet you later on? And his friend said, you're not going to look at life assurance, are you? Is that what you're going to sell? Life assurance. <laughs> Is that the best you can do? Life assurance. Forget that bullshit. Come to me for Tay Tarek. I'll show you about multi-level marketing. It's much better. <laughs> I'll show you about unit trust, it's much better. Forget those life assurance guys, they're all con men. So the birds are going to get some. He was on his way. But somebody gave him a different idea. The birds took him. And, and so he said, yeah, well, I guess, you, I guess you're right. I won't bother. So he doesn't show. So the birds are going to get some. Now you've got two options. Number one... You can chase the birds. So you can go find these birds. However, as you see there, if you go chasing the birds, you're going to leave the field or you're going to lose focus. It's just one of those things and the best comment is always going to be, isn't that interesting? Everyone say that together now, please, loud. Isn't that interesting? Because the birds are going to get some it's out of your control. Now you can chase the birds. I'm going to find that guy and I'm going to smash his face in. You stole my recruit. But once you do that, you leave the field, you lose focus and you're wasting time because there's nothing you can do about it because the birds are always going to take some of the seeds. So the best comment is just say to yourself, okay, cool, isn't that Interesting. Say it again. Okay, cool. Now, so the sower, because he's an ambitious sower and he has excellent seed, he keeps on sowing. That's the secret to his success. He keeps on sowing. If you keep on sowing, you can sow more than the birds can get because there aren't enough birds because 